So yesterday, in the Spine Discord, I helped someone rig an animated jellyfish that kind of looked like this guy's. So I thought I'd share that with you here too. The first motion that we want to look at is the main overall body motion. This motion's affecting the whole jellyfish, so that's where we'll start with our rig. We'll add a main body bone to control this motion. Next, what the artist does is uses a series of bones that go perpendicular from the main body bone. These control the inward and outward motion of the body. So we can add four body scale bones to our rig for the motion like he did. Make sure each bone is a direct child of the main body bone. Next step is to rig the tentacles. It looks like he's just using a regular bone chain here, so nothing unusual. Make a bone chain for each of the tentacles, and make sure that the bones are longer at the top and shorter at the bottom. That'll give us more range of motion at the tips, where they'll move the most. We can then add bones to both of the eyes and the mouth. The artist has more complex facial expressions than his, but I just downloaded this character from Canva and it doesn't really have all of the extra parts that we would want, so we're just gonna skip that part. I also noticed in his rig that there's extra body bones that I can't seem to identify. I think I see one right here. My guess is that he's got extra bones that just help him refine the edge of the silhouette when the body's moving, but honestly, we don't need those. We can get 80% of the way there and understand the principles of what he's doing with this rig alone. Not to mention... Anyway, so now that we're rigged, we can start weighting the bones. This tutorial is mainly just for analyzing how this person rigged and animated a jellyfish, and so we're not gonna spend too much time on weights or proper meshing techniques. To be honest, I really didn't put much thought into this myself. I just kind of traced it with a new mesh and then added some vertices using the generate tool. I highly advise you to do something better than I did. Now that we've rigged this little guy, we can start animating. We're gonna focus on the main body motion first. Go into animate mode and then rotate him like this. Then change your orientation to local here. This will let us translate the main body bone along the direction of its bone. Set a translate key at zero and 80 and then move him up on frame 40. Wow, look at him go. Next, we're gonna animate the inward and outward motions of the body. Set a scale key at frame zero and frame 80 and then set another frame at frame 40 and then scale the bones inward. You only need to do this on the x-axis. And don't forget to set your S-curves. After you've scaled them, do the same thing with translation. On frame 0 and frame 80, move all the body scale bones downward, along the same orientation as the body bone. Then go to frame 40 and translate them upward. We can now go in and offset all of these motions. Toggle on the offset tool, and then select all of your body scale bones. Click and drag the keys on the timeline to the right six frames. Then deselect the top bone, drag six frames to the right again, and so on and so forth until you go through all four bones. Then do the same thing for the scale frames. From here, you can play with the offset of all of these motions to get the look that you want. Now we get to move on to the tentacles. We're gonna use these same offsetting principles here. Select all of the leg bones, then make a rotation key at zero and 80 that looks like this. Then make another one at 40 that looks like this. Offset these rotation frames by about six frames each down the bone chains. Deselect the next bone in the bone chain as you go along. And then once you've done this, then you can offset the legs from each other. That'll make the overlapping motions a little bit more interesting. Make some final tweaks to the motions in general by offsetting different parts of the body. And that's really all that you need to do. Just a bunch of offset keys. And look at that, you've made a jellyfish. This is a great exercise for practicing using the offset tool and understanding how overlapping motion works. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, you can grab this project and more for free by joining SpineQuest Academy, where I'm sharing project files, animation resources, and tutorials. And if you're ready to take your spine skills to the next level, I'm launching a 12-week spine animation bootcamp where you can get foundational and personalized one-on-one -on -one training from me to level up your spine skills. First one begins in September, and it's only only open to 30 people, so be sure to reserve your spot today before it fills up because the next one isn't open until next year. Anyway, that's all for now and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!